This is Jazz Rocks with Adam. Watch, learn, play. We're going to take a 1, 6, 2, 5 progression and make it more and more tantalizing to the ear as we ramp it up. In this video I did recently, I talked about how to simplify playing over chord changes to make it so there's less to think about. Well, this video is the opposite, making simpler chord changes more interesting. I'll tell you, one interesting thing that you can do is hit that like button. As soon as you do that, well, you know, we'll get on with the lesson. Big thanks. Let's start with a very simple stock 1625. I'm just going to play shell voicings to outline the basic harmony, root, third, and seventh. First, I'll play over the chords that are written. Now there's nothing wrong with what I just played. It works absolutely fine. But you're here to learn some hip shit, right? In the PDF lesson, link below, I will have some examples for you to play through, not just chord changes like here in the video. So let's go to another level like function substitution. Here's a list of each chord's function in our key of C. You can substitute any chord with another chord that has the same function, so you can substitute the two chord with the four chord, for example, because in this key, their function is in a subdominant capacity. I think of subdominant chords as wingman chords. They're there to help the dominant chords get all the action. In short, your job as a wingman is to make sure that your buddy looks like the coolest and sexiest guy in the room. I'm talking George Clooney in Ocean's Eleven sex. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. I'm gonna substitute the five chord with the chord in the key of C that has the same dominant function. B minor seven flat five. <laughs> a drastic change, but if you tend to start your lines from the root of the chord each time, this one is a quick, easy way to get away from that. I played a bebop passing tone scale, not passing stones. That sounds painful over here. Oh. Just like that last example, I'll put the substitute changes I'm improvising above the changes the other me is comping. Now let's introduce the tritone sub. There's two reasons why we call it a tritone sub. We substitute the 5-7 chord with another 7 chord, where the root of that chord being a tritone interval away from the original chord. And each chord contains the same notes that are each other's 3rd and 7th, which happens to be the interval of a tritone. The G7 contains an F and a B. The D flat 7 contains an F and a C flat the enharmonic equivalent of a B. So now we'll be thinking D flat seven instead of the G chord. Now, even though the other me was playing a G seven chord, I was playing a line over a D flat seven. It doesn't sound wrong at all, right? It just sounds slightly more colorful. So we approach the original five chord with a two chord, D minor seven to G seven. We're now gonna approach the D flat seven with its two chord from that very temporary key center, if you wanna think of it like that. Let me know in the comments if you like where this is headed. Can you start to hear where this is getting a little more outside, a little more interesting? Matter of fact, let's go back to our like function substitution and let's swap out the one chord with the three chord. And let's start bringing in some secondary dominance. Let's make the two chord a D7. So we're sort of backpedaling a bit, and we're hearing the D7 as a 5 of 5, which is G7. So D7 is the 5 of G7, 
which is the five of C. So now we have E minor seven to A minor seven to D seven, A flat minor seven to D flat seven, finally on C major seven. Let's take that even further and approach the three chord with its two chord. Well, sort of its two chord. Now we have B minor seven, E minor seven, A minor seven, D seven, A flat minor seven to D flat seven to C major seven. F sharp in the B minor 7 and quite possibly F sharp in the E minor 7 if you decide to play that will give you a slightly more modern Lydian sound over the C major 7 chord. Let's bring in two more secondary dominant chords. We're going to make the 6 and the 3 dominant 7s. So now we have B minor 7 to E7, A7 to D7, A flat minor 7 to D flat 7, and then C major 7. Whew, it's starting to get hard. Jazz is hard, not really. The end result is we get a five of five of five of five. Now let's approach every dominant seven with its two chord. So we get B minor 7 to E7, E minor 7 to A7, A minor 7 to D7, A, A flat minor 7 to D flat 7 to C major 7. Whew, that was a mouthful. Now let's use a tritone sub on most of the dominant 7 chords. Starting where we had A7, it's going to be E flat 7 instead of A7, and then A flat 7 instead of D7. So now you have a 5 of 5 of the flat 2 chord, which is our original tritone sub. So we get E7, E flat 7, A flat 7, D flat 7, C major 7. <laughs> that even further and approach each one of those tritone subs with each of their two chords. Whew, you ready? So now we're going to have B minor 7 to E7, B flat minor 7 to E flat 7, A flat minor 7 to D flat 7 to C major 7. <laughs> Could you play the tritone sub of E7 to get B flat 7? Sure! Are we gonna try that now? No! <laughs> I have to leave some things for you to try on your own. Now we're gonna replace a backdoor 2 5 with the normal 2 5. What's a backdoor 2 5, you ask? It's a minor 7 going to a dominant 7 like a normal 2 5, but the minor 7 chord starts on the 4 chord. So you get F minor 7 to B flat 7, then C major 7. The B flat 7 chord works over the G7 chord because it's getting you close to that diminished sound, where you can play a dominant 7 chord in minor thirds ascending or descending. You'll find four dominant 7 chords in a diminished scale. So in our case, G7, B flat 7, D flat 7, and E7. So potentially you could think of any of those four dominant 7 chords. But going back, that's exactly why the B flat 7 will work. The F minor 7, and this is so cool, over the D minor 7 will get you close to a D minor 7 flat 5 sound. So you're kind of like superimposing uh, D minor 7 flat 5 to uh, altered sort of G7 sound, diminished E type of G7. So now it's going to be E minor 7, A7, F minor 7, B flat 7, C major 7. Now, I don't know if 
this has a name, but I call it the Bill Evans 2-5 substitution because that's how I learned it and that's how I relate to it through Bill Evans. So now when we get to the 2-5, I'm going to squeeze four chords into the space of two. D minor 7, E flat major 7, A flat major 7, D flat major 7, and then that will resolve to C major 7. So in total, E minor 7 to A7, D minor 7, E flat major 7, A flat major 7, D flat major 7, C major 7. The truth is you can come up with multiple combinations to come up with even more versions. So don't tell me you can't think of anything to practice. You can be my wingman anytime. Let me know what you thought of this lesson. Consider joining my Patreon group where you get perks like hanging out with me online once a month, discounts on all my merch, and all my PDF lessons are free. Before you go, I have some great videos over here for you to check out. This lesson went to 11. This lesson went to 11. You know, this, this lesson went to 11. Most lessons only go to 10. But my lesson went to 11. Most lessons only go to 10. This one went to 11. <laughs>